Or Imus. Like, yeah. I, like Imus has no <laughs> talent. He's like absolutely one of the worst radio performers I've ever heard. And that career just keeps going on and on and on. It People seems honor to him. Be, it matters yeah. not <laughs> that he has no ratings, that nobody likes him. He just goes on. I'm listening to that He's scumbag. There. I'm listening to that scumbag uh, tape Jamie gave me. JD gave me. Uh, this is um, I missed the other day ragging on the Jews because Jews don't have enough problems. But here he is ragging on the Jews. Well, that's a good thing. Uh, listen to this. And 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 by the way, when you listen to it, it's like, how would anyone listen to a show? Of this guy it is so intensely boring and all over the place and he mumbles and doesn't really say what's on his mind listen a great hour coming up imagine a great, a great hour. hour is it your the end of your show that's a lie right there <laughs> a great hour coming up Mr. America became a whole personality after I came to NBC. Oh, Politico. Perked his fucking ass up. Showed up for work every day once I, they hired me. A great hour coming up. Yeah. Is he going to play a George Carlin album? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're bringing in somebody else. Well, oh. any hour without him, I figure that's the, he's signing off. A great hour coming up. The Blind Boys Alabama are going to sing a bunch of tunes for us. Here's a good booking. Oh. The Blind Boys Alabama. But listen to this. I mean, they, you know... Or just an American treasure. That is not an overstatement. I remember. I remember when I first had him on a few years ago. How the uh, Jewish management at uh, mm -hmm. at uh, whatever whoever we worked for should be asked for it was uh, bitching at me about it. You know, careful there, Mel. And um, well, not Mel. I Mel's always didn't care what I did. Uh, uh, Mel Gibson. No, well, no, no, it's not so where I'm coming, obviously. You met Mel Allen, then. But, um, <laughs> you know, they were dissing the uh, handicapped African Americans. Remember that? Who yes, loved they, the baby Jesus. Yes. Remember that? They they said, said, we, we had a, absolutely. We had a meeting in my office. I recall. The well, blind boys, no, no. no. They, 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 were, they were furious. But, of course, I don't care what they say and never have. No. How, how can you thank God? Well, Barry, Even if you wear a beanie, how can you not love the blind boys? These guys. <laughs> well, as I, I tried to put it in terms that these money-grubbing bastards could understand. <laughs> I said, they, they, and, and they're always worried about my image and all that sort of thing, you know. And I said, they're handicapped, they're black, and they're blind. How do we lose here? And, they, and, and, and then a light bulb went off of their good over their scummy Green. little heads. <laughs> and plus, they're great. Yeah, and they are. Oh. Where is the downside? Well, Explain that to me. So the money grubbing wow. Jew, the money grubbing Jews, congregated in his office. First of all, you know he's a liar. Uh, th there's no management that sits there in a meeting trying to convince Imus not to have on the blind boys. It's such a bunch of horseshit. I've been in this business all along. No one's sitting and telling Imus what guest to book. That's a booking that'll never get any controversy. Right. Number two. The beanie-wearing, money-grubbing Jews were all in his office wanting more money. And Imus isn't afraid to go up against the Jews. What a hero. What a great guy. What a brave man going up against the Jew money-grubbers. Biggest fucking money-grubber on the planet is Imus. Selling posters to his audience of him looking sexy in front of a bunch of Venetian blinds. What a fuck nut piece of anti-Semitic shit. And by the way, why is he calling them, why is he being so nice to the blind boys when he ran through the halls calling black people niggers? Why did he say the nigger boys? That well, they're blind, they're not black. The blind niggers. Why did he say that, that <laughs> motherfucking racist? What's the what a bunch of blind? shit. <laughs> I'm his piece of shit garbage fuckhead. And not only that, not he is funny. He's calling the boys. Yeah, and not only that, not... He's be the blind <clears throat> men. Not only that, not funny. You know what I mean? Like, what's the thought there? Like, I, I, I wanted to book the, the blind boys. And meanwhile, you can be sure when the blind boys are singing in there, there ain't a person listening. And you can be sure that Imus isn't listening. Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. Imus doesn't care about it. Well, one of the other guys said the beanie comment, which wasn't even close to being funny. One of the other guys who, I mean, when you turn that show on, sometimes on MSNBC, I watch it like a car wreck. It's like watching an, people in an old age home. Yeah. They're all, like, ancient looking. <laughs> Piece of shit, Imus. Well, I just wonder if Imus is sitting at that ranch with the... With the 
blanket, the Indian blanket behind ah. him. With a papoose <laughs> for his little one. Yeah, I think, you know, he's wearing that blanket over his lap now, and <laughs> he's so old. They all look cowboy like... hat and that weird look. And, and the, 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 the headphones, yeah, so it's... he can't doesn't have to remove his hat. It's not to be believed. It's really, it's not to be believed, that whole look. <laughs> they all look like they're inches from a dialysis machine. <laughs> <laughs> like something's keeping them alive. And he's in, you know, total Western gear. Like, after he yeah. finishes the show, he's going to rope some cat. Yeah, he's a cowboy. Well, a friend of mine was in Starbucks and saw him early in the morning. Uh -huh. I guess he goes in there first thing to get his coffee. Yeah. Said it was absolutely frightening. Like, like standing behind, they didn't know who it was at first, and, like, there's a big cowboy <laughs> with the hat and, like... <laughs> Like with split jeans and cowboy boots, and then like this Methuselah looking face. Yeah. And then said, Oh, I think that's Imus. See, they're Imus of the naked you know. cowboy. Because now no. he even, you know, he could rob a bank because he's got that kerchief he wears around his neck. Yeah. So you can't see the wrinkles in his neck. He could pull that up and go rob a bank anytime. <laughs> Where does he broadcast from? Uh, his studio is in Queens, I think. And he's there. Sometimes Here, he's at his ranch. In urbanized Queens. Yeah. yeah, yeah, because there's a lot of other, like, cowboys out there. A lot of there. Indians. <laughs> Comes in, he shoots at the menu for the coffee he wants. He just he takes he's, out his six shooter. Takes out his six shooter. That's the other thing. He's got like his gun license, and he's got his guns and his hat. He's became a whole cowboy. It's a yeah, whole persona. Got his boots, his furs, his it's refreshing. Everywhere he goes. That's a throwback to those Hopalong Cassidy days. Hopalong. You just call him Hopalong Cassidy. Yeah. Mommy, is that Hopalong? Who was that old geezer that used to be in the? Uh, Gabby Hayes. Gabby Hayes. <laughs> Gabby Hayes. Oh, you, you, yeah, put that, it. you put that in the Ima song. He looks like Gabby yeah. Hayes. That's right. Well, one, one son's name Wyatt. The other one's Gabby Hayes. <laughs> <laughs> Gabby Hayes. Hayes. Yeah, Gabby Hayes was there. Dag damn it. Where are we going to go get over there? I had to name my son after an Indian killer. <laughs> Keep it in the family. You know, it'd be funny. Like instead of a cowboy, if Ima started dressing as a guy from medieval times, like in full suit of armor. Right. Yeah. I'm yeah. Ivanhoe. <laughs> <laughs> It was one of the three musketeers. It's me, Imish. I'm under here underneath my chain mail. Call me D'Artagnan. <laughs> I know it's hard to hear me, but I'm in my full knight's uniform. Wait a minute. Let me lift this flap. This let me lift up the flap so you can hear me a little better. <laughs> flaps down, flaps down at the door. And then flaps up on the arm again. Imish. I'm a cowboy on a on a what a, on a wheelchair I ride wanted. Uh, how's it go, Fred? Dead or alive? Dead or alive? You got you got the uh, song. I'm looking for it right now. Go ahead. I'm still I'll break into it, and then I got a lot to tell you about. That is a good one. A fake cowboy. Yeah, and I want to hear about Artie's trip to uh, wherever the hell he was. Well, we want to hear how much fun Dale <laughs> King is. Yeah, Artie was in town in Los Angeles, and he didn't give me a call, and. Uh, I, I called him to ask on it, and he just told me that he was sick all the time that he was there. <laughs> sure. Now, uh, and a kindly Mexican-American maid at the Four Seasons took good care of him. It's actually very true. That's, were you sick this weekend? <laughs> I'll tell you about it. I'll give you the whole right, right. A whole maid had to take care of him. Oh, my goodness. I, I, I owe this woman my life. I love her to death. Wow. Right. No song, Fred? Okay. Well, where is he going? That's a he's great song. Oh, he left. No, it's, it's over now. The moment, the moment is past. That's very unfred like. He's usually right on top of. Fred's usually like right on the money, but yeah. no, I'm a. Song. That is a great song too. I was looking it forward is. to hearing it. Silent night. <laughs> yeah. On the air. Go ahead. Hey now. Hey now. I saw Fred on Regis and Kelly on Friday. Yeah, I'm going to talk about that right now. Really? This is the greatest thing you How will ever... How did I miss that? I was watching them. You well, must have been watching uh, that closely. This is great. I saw a tape of it. So, Regis Phil... Yeah, in fact, uh, there was the Ander Anderson Cooper one. Right. And I guarantee you didn't notice this, Robin, and I'm going to refresh your memory. Kelly Ripa is sitting there. Do you know how they do like a monologue at the beginning where right. they just talk about the day's events? Right. A rap. So Kelly Ripa says to Anderson Cooper, hey, you know, it's freezing outside. I wonder how people are doing when they're walking on the street in the cold. She said, let's take our camera and go outside. So they, the camera goes outside and there's like random people just walking down the street. Who is the first person <laughs> they get a hold of? 
Fred Norris. Wow. <laughs> I, missed, I missed the first part oh. of the show. Well, I don't even... The, the reason I was saying this, I don't even know if you would... He was bundled up in a, in a ski cap and everything. Yeah. It was very cold. And he is walking down the street, and she goes, how is it outside? Fred does this sort of thing with his face to to show cold like like in a split second he's so quick he he gave was funny you cold in his face the audience totally cracked up they didn't know it's fred <laughs> i did a quasi did you realize... Harpo, uh kramer kind of take yeah a kramer uh -huh. kind of thing and i gave uh -huh. a thumbs up and moved on did you yell out the n-word he saved that bit. <laughs> no one would, really? yeah, after like, fred nobody I had no would I, talk i had no idea who it was or what it was for i saw a camera did, did you know it was live no, I had no know. idea what it was. Wow. I just finished dropping my daughter off at school, uh -huh. and there was no cabs that morning, so I literally had to run from my apartment all the way to her school, which wow. is like 10 blocks, wow. right? so she wouldn't freeze to death. Yeah. And I'm walking back, and I'm ready to go to the gym. There he is. There's Fred. Oh, let me see. <laughs> is that Fred? Uh, I didn't Fred. even recognize him. <laughs> and, and now what? You'll see that she says like a, to him. looks like a convict. She says, uh, is it cold out there? And he goes, who, me? And then he goes, makes this face. Oh, there here's you the, are. Here's the face. There he is. <laughs> and, then he, and then he walks away <laughs> and gives him a thumbs up. That's great. <laughs> Nobody else would even talk to the right. camera. <laughs> no, everybody, I, 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 uh, J.D. sent me uh, like a little clip of that. You everybody else me, was just walking by. You taught me a lesson. For, did you realize afterwards I that you were on Kelly Ripa's you show? You know what? I didn't realize what it was until I got, I got home. I was checking my email, and J.D. sent me an email. It was really nice and sweet. He goes, hey, dude. Good shot on Regis and Kelly or whatever. Right. I'm oh, that's well, so that's so what that was. Now, you know what? You, you, were, you were savvy knowing that it's probably some show. I, I the story it. is that it's I cold saw a camera, out. I heard a voice saying, <laughs> no, but you "Sir, gave me, is it cold outside?" Yeah. But there was nothing to identify who it was. You gave me uh, a good lesson there because it's funny when I'm walking on the street and someone has a camera, I immediately get pissed off. And I'm well, like, the fir my I first don't want to be bothered. My first inclination was to cross the street and say, my. get the fuck away from it. But yeah. I don't know. I must have been in a That would good have been mood. the one thing that could have been funnier. <laughs> <laughs> Running away. Had so, I realized it was Kelly, I would have said something obscene. I know me. I wouldn't have said anything. I would have just kept walking because I'm a dick. But you taught me a lesson. You're like, you know what, man? Go just have some roll fun. With it. Participate. Roll with it. Just huh? roll with it. Yeah, you were, you were good. Yeah, because I walk away, too. You know, half the time, there's a camera everywhere in Manhattan. Yeah, because most of the time, you don't want to deal with that shit. Yeah. That's right. Let's, uh... Hello? Hi. Oh, hey, good morning, Your Excellency. Oh, thank you. Uh, I have a question. I think I heard uh, before you said that Fred was a newly tattooed Fred. Well, it's funny. I was leaving the station yesterday, leaving the studio after the show, and I, I really never look at Fred or pay attention to him, really. You try not to. I try not to. And, and just, I'm used to that. Oddly enough, Fred was wearing a short sleeve shirt, and I walk by, and I see dirt on his arm. And I said, uh, Fred, wait a second. I look over. I go, Fred, you got a tattoo. Now, I I was the only one to notice besides Ronnie, the limo driver. Everyone yes, I else... didn't know this. <clears throat> so I spotted it with well, you're my... You're 34, so you're not going to notice. <laughs> I spotted it with my eagle eye, and I got into a conversation with Fred. And what I lo first of all, it is a very nice tattoo. I actually like it. What, what, can I see it? Well, you I will, well, let me explain it. it to you okay. first. Uh, I will tell you about it. I'll tell you what I learned about Fred, because... Yeah. Why should you have to go through the conversation I went through? <laughs> You'll Why do it endure? for me. It took me a long time to extract this information. I'll share it with you quickly, and then you won't have to have your own conversation with Fred. And it'll save Fred a lot of time, too. So I looked at this, and it's a giant scorpion, the evil scorpion, but uh, feminized with some flowers and things, but hmm. not overly feminine. And I said to him... Uh, fruity. I said, boy, you know, this. I would go to this tattoo artist, and Fred He's explained really good. to me he was an Asian. Well, they do the best tattoos. Do they? I don't know. I'm no. saying that. Well, this, this Asian happens to be very good. And I admired Fred's tattoo because it's all in blue ink, which I happen to like. I have colored ink and stuff, and I'm sorry in a way I do. I wish you I really been... don't like the color. I like I like what Fred has. And uh, this scorpion, it turns out, his daughter Tess yeah. is a Scorpio. Oh. And thus the scorpion, I guess, is the sign and um, the birth sign. So this was his way of honoring his daughter. Now, it is on his inner forearm right right inner forearm right there right there oh look at that there it is well, you're seeing it upside down you have to come over and see it the right way now but fred... i didn't know how would i see that ink how did you see that ink does it feel i, I was spotted beating it. off when he walked by <laughs> i was yeah i was beating i was beating off and i saw, i looked at fred i needed something to beat off to fred do you, do you feel weird with that thing on your arm now you it's a big what? change here's the deal i never thought in a million year million years i'd ever get a tattoo and now that i've got one 
I actually think I might get another. <laughs> really? Oh, geez. When well, did you get it? Uh, like the week of Thanksgiving. Oh, you know, we took it it's off. New. I've been pla- it's been in the planning stages since uh, June, and what? it was hard to get a to get in with this guy. I now you he's can a pretty see popular it. tattoo artist. If you look at your uh, TV screen, Robin. Oh, yes, I camera. see now. Okay. See the cruise guy. Right. That is a scorpion. That was nice. Zoom in. Oh, very, nice. very interesting. There's a musical note, I think, in reference right. to Fred. Right? Yeah. And yeah. his little flower petal in the other hand. The scorpion is holding the musical note in his claw. Yes. Pincer. <laughs> his pincer. <laughs> so he now has tattooed. It's an unusual placement in that it's his first one. You think it would be on his shoulder. But... Right. I thought it would be on his tentacle. Right. <laughs> but you know what? Fred did a, did a very smart thing. He actually put his tattoo where he can look at it. Right. You know, I never understood the people who get the tattoos, like, on their back. It's well, like, I, I don't get it. Well, there you go. I mean, the, who who knows what you get and what you don't. <laughs> and he, it looks like he spent a long time designing this. Did it, you, did it really was. Did the tattoo this artist draw it? Yes, he did. His name is Anil Gupta. Anil? Anil, Anil Gupta. A-N-A-L? A-N-I-L? A-N-I-L Gupta. That sounds like anal. It, it does. Anal I, and I, had, I was I was wondering how to pronounce his name because it looked like anal to me. <laughs> hey, anal. <laughs> but then uh, I heard someone come in and go anal. I go okay, good. Well, how long did it take? Him anal. How long did it take, Fred? Uh, two hours. Uh-huh. Were you a pussy? Did you sit there and cry and no. carry on? No, no, no. The only time it got a little dicey was over on the flower petals. But actually, it it became like halfway through quite pleasurable. Now you were a guy who said he'd never get a tattoo. Never. What changed your mind? My daughter. Your daughter changed That's your mind. That's it. She, well, she didn't talk me into it. <laughs> no, nah, you know what? I don't know. I'm so moved, just, by, yeah, the birth so moved by my daughter. Ah. You felt you had to honor her by right. tattooing yourself. And apparently that's a common thing for a lot of people to commemorate an event or an occasion. Right. All right. Now, you say you might get another one. Is there yeah. some other big event that has pushed yeah, what this? What else would you put on you? Uh, Benji going on the plane. No, really. No, what is I, it? I don't know yet. We I don't mean, know. It was just one of those things where I kind of looked at it. Go, oh, gee, the tattoo looks lonely, so maybe I should get another one. <laughs> well, that's it what won't be anything extreme like a three on the neck or, or damnation. Yeah, don't do the neck. No. Sometimes it becomes an addiction, you know. People get into this. Yeah, yeah you said it was pleasurable. I don't think, I, well, halfway through, but then when he got to the pedals, then it became unpleasurable <laughs> again. So, Did you bleed a lot? No, actually not. No, all right. I, I would have taken good. you for a bleeder. No. Why don't you I tattoo so uh, Cookie Puss on your arm? I know you <laughs> That like might be the puss. next one. That would be a greatest tattoo, a big <laughs> Cookie go. Puss. I think if I were 20 years old, I would do that. All right. Goof. Well, there you are. There's Fred. A big leap for Fred. With yes. Scorpion. Very scary. <laughs> just now. And I have to go to an area which is not going to be comfortable. Oh. All right. Now... What area is that? I, I have to mention that what? I received a letter from the engineering department. Of this establishment? That's right. And this involves Benji and Artie. Uh. All right, now, let me just read this to you, and then we'll have reaction from both of these gentlemen. <laughs> What, what is that, man? And this is serious, Benji, so be be prepared for an ass reaming when nah, I'm going I know what it's about. Uh, by accident, Benji spilled coffee on his computer keyboard. Not only did the keyboard have to be replaced, but the coffee seeped to the electronic equipment wiring below the counter. A hole that allows wires from electronic equipment that is housed below the desk is the path the coffee followed. In addition, the collection of miscellaneous items kept on the countertop and floor between Benji and Artie had to be removed before work could be done. This took roughly 20 minutes. Again, I know this was an accident, but I bring this to your attention as today it was only a keyboard that needed to be replaced. If this was a piece of equipment that directly affected the on-air quality of the show, we would have not been able to correct this problem quickly. Now, listen. You got a smorgasbord back there that cannot exist. Yeah, I understand you, you're a quirky guy and all this stuff, but if you're going to sit in this studio, this brand new beautiful studio that we are so lucky to have, you got to do me a favor, pal. Get yourself a little area, put in a sack all your condiments and things, and keep it out of the studio. And 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 be careful. I understand you want to have a cup of coffee and this kind of thing, but you, you got so much shit over there that of course your arms are going to knock into it. You're a big fat oaf, and you've got to really curtail what it is you do back there. How do you respond? Uh, honestly. Honestly? Yeah. I I uh, it's it's I spilled a cup of coffee. You spilled a cup of coffee and, over and, the and I take I take normal care. And I, in fact, no, I take extra care. You got too much shit all around you. Listen, it, listen, it looks like listen. a pig sty around you. You want me to respond or not? Go ahead. You're in essence the boss. What you say goes. 
So I, if you want me to, whatever you want me to do, I'll I do. I talked about this with you a week or two ago. And, and nothing and moved. That's and not true, moved. Robin. That's not true. I nothing moved. I was back there. Nothing moved. Uh, uh, that's just so not true. No, it is I, true. Benji moved stuff. I didn't move anything. That's why you saw is my Is that stuff. what's going on? Yes. No, well, I, you got to clean up. No, you no, got to. you're right. No, this Benji cleaned I up. I thought I was in a laundry room the last time I was back there. Guys, just take five minutes after the show and clean everything up. I will do that. I, Benji did clean up and I didn't. And Benji, ah. it's, Benji, Let me it's, see if he has his condiments there, though. It's I, awkward. For I Benji. see all kinds of things over there. That, that is not your stuff, Artie. Where? Look at it. He's got rolls of tape. Why do you have a roll of I tape? I don't know. It's not mine. Someone then brought it, it in and out. put it here. Okay, I'll throw, throw it out. out. Throw it in the Someone garbage. Someone brought it from engineering and left it there. I don't Anything what? you don't recognize, throw right. out. What else is that? You just threw out George's sauce. Yeah, what is that? Throw that out too. And th you keep going. Wait, see, this is the. Wait, wait, wait. No, wait, keep going. Bench, bench. That's the keep tape. throwing shit out. That's scotch tape. Don't throw scotch tape. Why are you throwing out scotch tape? Whose is that? Don't throw I don't know. You didn't put that there? No. Gonna, all right, then throw, throw it out. out. <laughs> throw it out. Anything you don't use, throw out. I'm bench, serious. Wait, wait. This is my turn. All right, he's in a shtick coma. Throw that out. No, that's not shtick coma. Throw it out. Throw everything out that you don't use. Yeah. Why was there a picture there? Oh, look, there's lots of pictures yeah, back there. Yeah, throw out the Heineken. That's everything. Oh, oh, oh. Dude, dude. Well, dude, dude, easy. What is he oh, doing now? Easy. easy in there, Fred's guitar. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll take the Heineken. Oh, he yeah, watch the, the guitar. guitar. There's more shit. He's, by the way, he still has more shit. This is already stuff from, I guess, that they cleared out. We we had to clear all this out to, to make room for George yesterday. This is a box full of Artie's crap. Throw it out. Is that my action figure? Yeah. <laughs> but, Howard, can I make one other suggestion to Benji? Yeah. That's a, that's Benji, I'm being really serious. very simple. They make these metal coffee cups with a top on them that if you spill them, they don't spill out. It's it looks just, a lot like Yeah, the one yeah. like what Fred, has. Fred has. You know what Goofus and Gallant is in Highlights magazine? <laughs> Goofus yes. is the asshole and, and Gallant is the good guy. You see what Fred has? He's Gallant. He's got a special spill-proof coffee mug. That's yeah. a great idea, and I'll, yeah. I'll get one. I mean, and the reason on. is there's a lot of electronic equipment around here. Why do you? How did you obtain such a device? Uh, there are a lot of places to sell them. You can, <laughs> you probably get one in Dwayne Reed. Dwayne Reed. You probably get one at Starbucks. They no. sell them. They've got a nice assortment. Yeah, throw us in different colors. Keep throwing stuff out. Why uh, do you have a shofar there? Well, occasionally we use it. All right. As a and what is that? Uh, what is that? that? That thing, that piece of shit you got standing there. What is that? Yeah, what is that? It's Chocolate. a box of pens. All right. See, I, I have got, a present see, for Benji. I, what? Mm. What is that, Fred? It's another cup. Oh, That's wow. another cup. Give it to him, please. There you go. Thank God bless you. That's Thank your Christmas you. gift from Fred. Thank you. Thank you. Machayim. Machayim. But I got to stand George, up for, am I right? you need for a Benji. Clean... You, what you Absolutely. saw was my stuff, Robin. Oh, you need okay. A, you need a clean working environment. George is sitting back there. He thinks this place is a pigsty. But uh, Artie had well, a change of clothes over him. there, it looked like. Yeah. Artie's got the garbage <laughs> like you wouldn't believe. Well, I need three, like Jackie Gleason, I need three different sizes of clothing. <laughs> Throw it all out. You're not going to use it. over and save this picture. Uh, it's me in the Vegas horse. This is sentimental. <laughs> all right. Do you understand what I'm saying? You know what? I'm going to explain yeah, something to you. And this is probably something George knows as well because Brad yells at him. <laughs> when oh, something shit. doesn't have a use, when you don't use something, throw it out. That's the key to a, a, a successful life. Minimalize. Right. And I, I, you, I love that attitude. I, I and really I know you to want to be a success badly, desperately. And I am telling desperate. you, I'm giving you a key to life right now. I don't often reveal this to you because I don't have private conversation with you. <laughs> I try to avoid that. I am telling you, out of the bottom of my good heart, in a successful life, you throw out anything you don't use. I, I agree. That's why I'm going to throw you right out. Uh, <laughs> now listen to me. you got to get that coffee mug in use. I like you. You're and a talented guy. you don't guy. bring jumbo-sized uh, condiments to right. work. You want to bring a little salt and pepper and leave it somewhere outside? He brings outside air food. Yeah, he brings, in a, uh, he brings yeah. in almost a whole, like, it's not a little salt shaker, a big, giant salt box. You know what? I took it to heart what you said about salt. And when my parents said I cut out salt. No, you don't need salt. So everything has salt in it anyway. Here, wait. They're coming in to move all your shit out right now. Thank you. Poor Artie. Clean up now. I don't know what the... <laughs> you can't even move. I can't see over my gut. You're dropping all that trying to clean up his corner there. Your t-shirt. Shit. Thanks. That T-shirt doesn't fit in. Yeah. <laughs> the double X. That's what I mean. It doesn't fit. 
<laughs> what is all this? Oh. Yankees. Yeah. Look at it. You just ripped well, the whole thing. Well, people send me stuff. It's very nice of them to send me stuff. But I thought you had an assistant who was taking care of that stuff thing. now. Oh, I, I, that I told that motherfucker. Where is she? He's fired. <laughs> Where's your assistant? Get him in here. He's clean supposed up. to handle clean that. Clean all this shit up. Look at this. But things of jelly. It's yours, Benji. Beers. <laughs> I mean, Smuckers. That's the none. syrup for the pancakes. What is that, George? What is that? What did you have? It's these miniature... Uh, that was uh, a gift cures. from Richie, uh, for me. He gave me that. What is morning. that? Miniature it's what? Chocolate Jack Daniels. Uh, to whom? T to me. Oh, it was um, in my place. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Throw it out. <laughs> Your place, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Well, if you're going to throw it out, I'll take it. <laughs> no, 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 no. Brad, look at what I Give brought it to you. <laughs> yeah, it's for Brad. <laughs> Give it to it, Artie. The chocolate Jack Daniels, you don't need that. Give it to George. Well, it was given to me this morning by Richie. I don't want to be rude. You're going to eat that? Oh, yeah. I see. You know how many calories are in that? You want to suck up Benji's dick? <laughs> no, that's the all point. Right, all right, listen, everybody got to keep their areas I got straight. my ESPN Sports Almanac. All right, but you don't need that here. For whenever you want to know, you know, <laughs> Shaquille yeah. O'Neal's free throw percentage. Robin, I, I, had to, I am sorry to waste the audience's time. No, that was quite entertaining. All right. Uh, it was I mostly it was it. mostly my fault at the Mets back here, but if Ben no, didn't spill the you. coffee, we would have been in the clear for a little while. Right. That brought it to my attention. Yeah, it's amazing the transformation at this desk. But what happened? In just a few right. moments. In just a few yeah. minutes. Just a few Throw seconds. it all out. I know. I out. Know. Out and see. I mean, look at me and Benji. We're not. We're not the. Yeah, we're not the on. sharpest tools in the shed. All right, George. I disagree. <laughs> all right, David, you're on the air in Hartford, Connecticut. David, go ahead. Hey, Howard, you got to realize you're dealing with two mental midgets over there, and. It, You've got the responsibility of running a kindergarten class, and as, as the teacher, you have to do a pass through at the end of the day. And if their crayons and finger paints uh, aren't put away, I got to tell you something. I, I don't like being the responsible one around here. I, I'm the, the wild man of the airwaves. I'm the one who should be out of control. I'm the one who should be on heroin. I'm the one who should be sucking dick. I'm the one who's... Me and Benji are like tortured artists, only without the talent for art. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to be the voice of reason on the show. Robin's the voice of reason. I'm the wild man. I got these two lunatics forcing me to sober up. Well, you need to give Robin a ruler and have her do a walk through the uh, studio at the end of each day. That sounds and hot. Some hands. <laughs> you know, then they'll start acting up on purpose. I have my I have my John Entwistle DVD that uh. John the Stutter gave me. Well, there you, you go. <laughs> All right, thank you, uh, David. I have my Rawlings mouse pad. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to take a break. And I'm gonna do a clean sweep of this joint. Yeah, we gotta. Uh, I mean, it's it's crazy. I I I I I, I don't believe what's going on. I don't on, know why it has to be that. I way feel like I got Benji in trouble because after you scolded us the first day, Benji got right on it and and he said to me, he "Goes Art, listen." No, Benji uh, doesn't have to get, clean up. No, Benji. no, but he said, "Art, listen, this is all your stuff. I don't want to touch it because it's your stuff." And I go, "I'll get to it," and I bullshit him, and then this is happened. So. He just <laughs> threw out a shitload of things. So I know I'm right. Yeah, he he wasn't completely in That's it. That's right. Yeah, when I came here on Monday morning, it was like uh, being in a third world country. Right. You know, all this debris. All right, whatever. <laughs> and George remembers when he first came in here, how beautiful and clean it was. Oh, it was stunning. Remember Everybody the first likes week? the new kid. <laughs> <laughs> all right, George, I'm going to let you throw it. Uh, why don't you do an announce here, and then we'll get right to commercial and come back, and we have a big show for you. Even Evil Dave is stopping by. But all go ahead. All right. This is paradise. I'm getting just what I wanted for Christmas. I'm sitting next to the cutest little heroin addict, gambler, binge eater, hooker banging, fall mouth, cuddly muffin. This side of the Mississippi. Happy holidays from me, George Takei, and the Howard Stern Show. Isn't that nice? Who's the guy? You didn't mention <laughs> That's what it was. <laughs> hey, Artie, someone said you're wearing pajamas today, that you're not what? fitting into your pants, that you're actually wearing pajamas. Well, I, I, I went, I'm trying to be like Vinny DeChin Gigante and get an insane play. <laughs> what are you wearing, pajamas? I have pajama pants on. I but see? I was told they were interchangeable. Let's see what you're wearing. Oh, my God, you're wearing your pajamas. Get what it. happened was I went to L.A. This... you got to come over and see this. for us. I went to L.A. this weekend, right? And right. I, I I ran out of pants that fit me, so I, I they're all in a wash. The Mexicans coming today. 
the Mexican. <laughs> those are pajama pants. Look at those. <laughs> they're interchangeable. No, they're not. Those are pajamas. The flies in your pocket sticking out. <laughs> those are pajamas. Your fucking underwear is. I it? feel like you guys are family. At this point. <laughs> are you so heavy that you can't fit in? Well, your pants? I have. What happened was, no, I have pants that fit me, but there's they're dwindling. Are you gonna walk around on the street like that? Yeah, I'm good. Look at the fly. Your whole oh. cock is sticking out. Who told you those were interchangeable? Those are so pajamas. You see that? His fly's open. Your whole fly, Artie. You look like you're out of in a hospital. Oh wait, I'm sorry. I don't know that. Your mental patient. <laughs> I'll fix that. <laughs> his whole penis. Why is he it wearing a jacket whole life? A with his pajamas? What happened? You, you don't even fit in your pants? Do you weigh over 300? I got 300? three pairs of pants. No. What are you I doing? I got three pairs of pants that fit me, and I took them to L.A., and they're all fucking dirty. So. Look, even his little drawstring is knotted. <laughs> Want me to help you? Yeah, wait a minute. Sorry. <laughs> this is very embarrassing. Wow. Yeah. Look at you. Look at you. You guys got to see this oh, on TV. I either got to buy more pants or I got to get, well, I'm getting them washed today, tomorrow. Who later. told you those were interchangeable? Nobody told you that. It said it on the label. Oh. That you can wear them as pants? If you're a girl. Yeah, like my daughters will walk around in their pajamas <laughs> like and go to school, but it's like kind of a look. You're like a big heavy set man. <laughs> <laughs> now you got me all so look at the wait, look at the look at the T V monitor and, and watch when you turn to the side your whole penis and underpants. Oh, I gotta, oh, I gotta figure God. this out. <laughs> They're interchangeable. The Mexican will be done you, by one. Read the uh, read the uh, label, it says interchangeable if insane. <laughs> really, you do look insane today. Yeah, I will look. Yeah, Ralph. Oh, my God. Quickly. Can you get a... a who cares? Shut up. So I can hey, figure it out. Hey, Bill. Well, you know. It could be a lot of people there, so a lot of people just saying it, you know? Right. right. Have you lost some more teeth, people? Beetlejuice? I had to, yeah. Oh, Jesus. What oh, happened to your teeth? Falling out. Huh? You lost no, the I had to take them out. Why? What happened? Probably get some new teeth, Ralph. Yeah, yeah. You're not brushing? Oh, no, 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 no. They, they're just falling out, you know. Oh, for real. Okay. Man, Beetle, how old are you now? Me, I don't know. Wow, well, what is... What, it's at least about 42, 40-something. Well, well, yeah, you definitely need help. We, first, we got to find out how well, old he is. 40, right. You know. <laughs> well, about 40-something. Well, you probably ate too much Mr. T cereal. No, 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 no. That's it. No, if you, had Mr. <laughs> if you had Mr. T cereal, that would have given vitamins and iron. I think you that know. sugar got that. would have given some calcium. <laughs> yes. B, when, I don't have the bone there. I'm, I'm yeah, worried yeah. about you, B. You lost your teeth. That's hard to eat, isn't it? Well, it's hard to eat, but it's still, I still eat it. Yeah, you do. All right. Yeah. M Mr. That's T, good. Yes, sir. Uh, oral uh, care is very important, right? Yes, it is. Dental. Dental hygiene. Definitely, dental definitely, hygiene, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Flossing and pressure and all that stuff. See, I believe in pressure. You yeah, know, every time I eat a meal, pressure, pressure, pressure and I gargle. Uh. Beetle, do you, are you aware of Mr. T? Are you uh, a fan? Did you watch uh, Mr. T on TV? Yeah, sure. You did. And, yeah. And, and do you remember his show, The A-Team? Oh, The A-Team? Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and uh, do, do, he, he, of course, is famous for the movie Rocky. Right. Um, Rocky, yeah, yeah. he played Rocky, he yeah. played bartender, Rocky, yeah. Bartender. Bartender. And he was a bartender. Right, yeah. that's right. That's why right. he, right. he was a... Yeah, that's why I need to help him. <laughs> <laughs> he knows all the right. Yeah, be a Jew. Yeah, me, yeah. Be there, he know me, you know me. Right. Yeah, how you doing, brother? I'm doing pretty good, That's man. what it's good, that's what it's about. you remind me of Mr. T in one respect. Right. You recently have sworn off women, right? The last time you were here, you said you don't want anything to do with sex or women, right? Well, sex is all right, but it, it doesn't matter. Right. But you had given up women the last time we talked well, to you. Well, I used to give it up women, but I'm still on it. Oh, you're on it. You're back to you're it. Back to women. When's the last time you had sex? Uh, not even had sex in <laughs> at least... <laughs> This guy gets 20, 20 years ago. Oh, whoa. Whoa. Yeah. He, gets laid. Been that long. he gets he gets laid a lot. Good, good, good. And he's good, even good. called in while he bangs chicks. Good, good, good. Oh, good. We, don't want, no, we don't want no perversion. We All want right. we want a guy to be healthy. But, but, That's let me, but let me get to the point. Yes, I'll get right. to the point, Howard. B, the last time you were here, right. you were really down. Oh, a little bit. Yeah, a little more than a little bit. You were depressed. Well, just a little depressed. But... I know your manager, Sean, he had a stroke. Right, right. And you were down about that. You were down. You... Well, a little bit about that, yeah. yeah. And I, I just thought it was a great opportunity. Mr. T's new show, Pity the Fool, premieres October 11th at 10 p.m. and deals with um, sort of advising motivating people, motivating and... people, making them feel it's good. Fine. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Is, is there a way that Mr. T could speak with you now and maybe make you feel better about life? Oh, yeah, sure. Why sure, not? all right, all right. Give it a shot. And see if Mr. T can inspire you. Give it a shot. You give it a shot. All right, Mr. T, go ahead. <laughs> I mean, well, no, it's, 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 you know, it, it, 
See what you see. You put me on the spot like this. Yes, and I like, have. I know and, that. And, and you and you can't you, you can't do the right stuff. You know, like this right. all the cameras. He's you know, he's a tough case. No, but like I said, see. No, yeah, no, no. See, see, like I said, it takes. Are you that. saying you can't help? No, no, I can help. No, it takes. This is. See, you guys is up. See, this is the wrong format. You know, for you think we need to select. Like I told you, you know, we should walk down the street. I need to spend some time with Beetlejuice. We just can't come right here. It'd be the wrong thing. You know. Plus, well, how would you second. start with, with Be Beetlejuice? You know, I, I would start like, 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 sort of like the Rockets thing, getting to know each other. You know, we'll go back and understand where we come from. And listen, I don't just come and say, this is what you need. Where do you, you come need. from, Beetle? Be, where do you come from? Well, I came from Jersey. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. I, yeah. Yeah. And you came from your mother, of see, course, who's a lovely yeah, woman who I know. See, another yeah. thing good, what we good, see, like me and Beetlejuice went out to dinner or lunch. See, because we spending time. We need time well, to solve the could, problem. Maybe I could help Beetle here. Yes. Because Beetle's a, a, a modest man. Okay, yes. Uh, be, I think Beetle is at a crossroad in life. Okay, that happens sometimes. What, is he looking for a new career? No, I think Beetle has a career. You're, you're doing all your... Uh, what are you doing? What are you doing? I'm doing all my careers, man. Yes. What are you doing now? Are you doing dwarf tossing anymore? <laughs> no, 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 no. No, nah, I'm not doing that. I got Good. two other. So, well, well, we got two other guys, so, you know. What two other guys? What are they doing? Uh, no, I got midgets doing that right now. I know, right? Appearances? Yeah. All right, so career wise, you would say you're a nine. In other words, your career is uh, at a scale of one to ten, you're a nine. You're, you're happy professionally. Yeah, I'm doing professional stuff. You okay. Know? All right. <clears throat> but I sense in your personal life, you're sad. You're you're upset about lonely. It. You're lonely. You'd like to have companionship. Well, well, I'm not really lonely. Sometimes I'm lonely, but it's all right. right. Nobody to talk to. What is oh, the no, hardest no, part of being? So lot. It's not a whole part of life, but you know, a lot of people does it. You know. What is the hardest part of being Beetlejuice? So, Mr. T can well, help you. Well, what? It's all the part about it is. It's all right. Be yourself. Be yourself. All right. Are you are you are you, are you, you happy, Beetlejuice? Oh, I'm definitely happy. See, that's the key right there. But right. give a guy help, you he can't. Wasn't. Yeah. Oh, right, last week was well, maybe maybe this week. And see, that's what happens. See, you give people some time. Sometimes they sleep on, they get better. So we got to give them a little time. See, time conquers all. Time is the healer. Well, I'm gonna be honest is. with you, and if Beetle doesn't mind me saying this, right, be, right, right. Be, uh, gets sad sometimes. I've seen him cry on this right. show. Oh, Whenever you cried the last time, you were really well, upset. You know, that's that wrong, Beetlejuice. I want you to know that's that wrong to cry. Well, now, that's emotional. Yes, I cry. Matter of fact, you know, I cry when I go to the hospital. I cry when I go to the homeless shelter. That's a shelter in Los Angeles, Midnight Mission. When I feed the people, when I go there and I hug them and see their stories, I'm driving home, tears in my eyes, tough Mr. T's crying. And my mother told me, she said, son, you don't want to be around a man that don't cry. You know, I'm not called, oh, I don't cry, why not? I don't want to be around guys like that because I'm seeing somebody hurting. That's why I cry. When I see mothers in the hospital holding their children, I cry with Let's that. Let's take That's a, a phone call from Do Mr. Yes. Huh? Beetlejuice should go to a homeless shelter. No, no, he don't need to go to a homeless shelter. He got you guys. Your guys is here. Y'all are his companion. He don't need, need to make you it not go to a homeless shelter. Maybe, why? maybe go there to, to talk to somebody, not to live no. there, but Mr. to talk T to somebody. Mr. T wants you to go to a homeless shelter. No, I don't want him to go there. I talk to a lot of people. Yeah, talk, that's what I'm saying. Right, you, right. So you talk to a downtrodden and try to lift their spirit. That's what Mr. T is about. Uh, Mr. T must be an inspiration to Beetlejuice. To see a proud black man who has made his way in life, has set a lot of uh, a precedent in the black community. He's the first black man to have his own cereal. Uh, it must give you a lot of racial pride. Is that oh, true? It, it definitely does. Yeah, definitely he's an inspiration. Does. Yeah. Yes. Thank, All right. you. Thank you, Peter Juice, and I'll do my best never let you down. Oh, you're definitely right, man. Definitely, right. brother. That's what it's about, lifting brother's spirit and whatnot, giving them hope. Mr. T bought his mother a mansion. Right. Giving them hope. Right. Right. Uh, do you, you know, know you buy your mother with you? Oh, oh, yeah, definitely. You take care of your mom? Oh, yeah, you do. definitely. All right. Okay, good. Well, right. I think even, uh, you know, Beetlejuice used to sport some pretty wild hairdos. I think he took that page from Mr. T. You Were you inspired by Mr. T? Oh, definitely. Remember you came in here with those wild hairdos? Oh, yeah. yeah. Right, yeah. right. Sometimes you won't get naked. It's real good about it, though. Yeah. What, what, what are you drinking in that cup? Is that... Oh, it's coffee. Coffee, coffee, okay. coffee, coffee, coffee. He loves his coffee. Oh, wait, that's good. No, that's good. Uh, Crazy Beetle, Alice do you wants... do drugs anymore? Me? Nah, I quit that a long time ago. That's good, that's good, that's good. Because yeah. I used to be with Nancy Reagan, just say no. Yeah. But wait a second, you still smoke weed, right? I want to smoke a little bit weed. No, yeah. all right, all right. I ain't gonna, that, 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 all right, that don't make him a bad person. He's not a pervert. I didn't say he was bad. I know, I know. He, I'm just letting, I'm letting him man. know. He's not a pervert. He's not trying to pick up little boys and nothing like that. You know, Do you so, try to pick girls. up little boys? No, I don't no, want to go girls. Yeah, all right, girls. See, I like that. I like that already. That's important. Just like she does. That's right. I really like you. Yes, yes. You like Robin. That's like Robin. You like Robin, too? Oh, yeah. Would you marry her and make her Mrs. Juice? I don't think so. Wow. You don't date her? <laughs> You're not going to get romantic with me either. Oh, oh one second, don't marry all. You'd be hard at all. <laughs> well, You'll be traveling, baby. Well, wow. Let's allow Crazy Alice to speak to Mr. T. Right. Go ahead. 
Hello? Yes. I'm still in hell around junkies and people shitting and pissing and, 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 and throwing up on the floor smoking crack and cigarette in my hallway, and they're coming in my house. Well, you know, Alice lives in a uh, a very depressed area. She's uh, in a, yeah. a, a poor economic uh, area. Uh -huh. uh, and you what say, can Mr. T do for you, Alice? Alice, what tell us think? more. My father, he tried to whoop me with a belt, and I snatched it away from him and punched him in the face. He ran in, the, in his bedroom. <laughs> Mr. T, Mr. T, you think laughing? Laugh. Wow. Why are you laughing? Because, because I, I know you. There ain't no real calling, people. <laughs> you know, I, I've been doing Harvard almost 10 what years. About? How would have them plants in there doing that stuff? That's not a real person. That's a real person. What are you talking about? I mean, it's, I mean, it's, I mean, it's a real, I mean, she's real and all that, you know, but the stuff is, you know, they they make this stuff up. You know what I mean? Beetlejuice. You, know, you, know, you, know, you know, I know, I know how. What you mean? You know, I know, you know what I mean. You feel me? You feel me? All right, but I finished talking to Alice. Maybe we can help you. Yes. Yes. Okay. Come on. What, you're you're what? you're stifling her by not believing her story. All right. All right. Let's say, Mr. T, go believe ahead, her. Go let's ahead, say Alice. I want to help you, Alice. Where can I come get you at right now? Fuck! I've been through a rough childhood. Damn it! That would make me wild. No. Where you at right now? Like are you in Harlem? Where are you? Are you in Mississippi? Where are you? Fuck off, you fat. <laughs> <laughs> Upset. No, nope. see, that's a see Nobody right there. Like right there, we know she's wrong because I'm not fat. <laughs> right there, so we know it's wrong. Right there, so you ain't see me. She's so that's angry, that's, that's why we know it's a joke, yeah. Beetlejuice. She's but angry. but I love how I love coming on the show. Listen, I, she's angry. <laughs> she, she hate me. <laughs> see y'all. Like coming on Howard's show, he mix he mixed the stuff in. That's how it's controlling the knobs and all that stuff. I'm used to Howard now. You know what I mean? Let's go. To Let's Scott. go to another caller. Scott, you're on the air. Yes. To Let's go to a real caller. Let's go. To That'll Scott. be impossible. That'll be kind of hard. <laughs> Uh, let's uh, go to uh, Scott, uh, who wants to speak about Mr. T. Go I love it. Watch this, yeah, Beetle. Good morning, right. Howard. And uh, Artie, I love you. And Mr. T, it's a pleasure to speak with you, sir. Thank you, brother. Watch this. Uh, listen, when I was a little kid, I had all your toys. I ate your cereal. I turned out just fine. I think everything is wonderful. You are my inspiration. Because of you, I stayed off of drugs. I, I kept this straight and arrow. And I think my life is as wonderful as it is because All of right. you. All right. Well, there you, you know, go. Nice. No, no, no. Let, let me tell you people out there in Radio Land, TV Land. That's the way Howard worked. He set me up. No. He, he got the call. He said, okay, so say something nice about Mr. T. Now, now the next caller going to do some cursing and all that stuff. Stop but I love Howard. Because when not I come true. to your show, Howard, not you know, I can, I can get loose at your show. You're wrong. I can get loose at your show, wrong. Howard. Mike, go ahead. You're on, Mike, you're on the air with Mr. T. And, of course, Beetlejuice is here. And uh, well, let's say hi. Uh, it's an honor to talk to Mr. T. Uh, I'm actually calling about Beetle. Yeah. You know, uh, did he tell you the real story why he lost his teeth? Why? No, why? I called him with my wife, so I knocked him out. Oh. He's a chump. <laughs> if I would have done that, you couldn't do it any day, buddy. Beetle, you're Not even strong enough, buddy. You're a two-foot-tall chump. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm a two-foot-tall chump. I weigh 25 pounds. What do you got, pal? <laughs> <laughs> huh? I'm this I went 245. I could have knocked you out right there, boy. Bing, this this guy is claiming that you were banging his wife and he and came he home and knocked your teeth. I knocked his teeth out. Nah, nah, that's... That's like what goes up under the chapel. That's unbelievable. Unbelievable. <laughs> this guy, this guy's a coxman. This guy gets laid like crazy, right? Right, oh, right, right. Be. I can, I, okay. I, I go crazy for girls. Man. Sir, what happened? If you want to get laid? I get laid with the woman. Hey, when it's happening, so you it did sleep with his wife? Oh yeah, that's right. I did. Party, I know you're lucky. Part... That's all you lost was your teeth, buddy. I'm coming after you. I know where you live. Where you, where are you gonna find me? Where are you gonna find me? At? <laughs> you I don't think so, pal. Now, the first place you'll find me is with your mom. <laughs> All right, give me five minutes with your wife. I'll bang her, too. Oh. All right, thank you. Oh. All right. All right, enough of that. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Mr. definitely. T, there's a guy who knows how to handle himself. You, he doesn't need a bodyguard, does yeah. he? No, 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 yeah, you know, you know. Artie, you've had a fight with Beetlejuice recently. I, uh, well, uh, you know. Are uh, you and Beetle okay now? Well, the problem with Beetlejuice is, to me, doesn't admit that he's gay. What? Oh, wow, this is, this is going from bad I to worse here. Gay, man. This I'm is going gay. from bad no, to worse. I heard you were gay. Hey, I'm not gay, but I'm not... I'm not, not a homo, but I'm not gay, dude. You're a fag. Right. Fuck, you fag, but I'm not gay, dude. No, you're a fag. I ain't, I ain't no all fag. Right, I all you right, all right. Fuck, I'm skinny better than you, which you right. right now. All right, easy, easy, easy. It's fine Be right now. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. I'll fuck you Beetlejuice. 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 Beetl
Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, kick the fags in. Ladies and gentlemen, homo. Hey, beat the juice. Beat the juice. Beat the juice. Be a chop. People, people, people. This is the Howard. This is the Howard Stern show. This is the Howard Stern show. Anything might happen. Anything might happen. Hey man, some kids, some kids is on the show. Hey, some kids is on. Kids listen to the show because they know I was here today. Beetle juice. So we don't want to use a lot of bad language. Beetle juice. Don't worry about that. Beetle juice. Don't worry about that. Beetle. Sit on down. Beetle juice. Feel down. Beetle juice. You have to call nobody no name. Beetle juice. Sit down. Come on, real. Sit down. Sit down. Let me take. Let me Beetlejuice, right. come over here. Beetlejuice, listen to that. Beetlejuice, listen to that. I pay the food. I pay the food. Sit well, down. Hey, man. Kids, right. listen to the show. We can't have all that cursing. Come on. We can't have all that. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, sit down. Stop sucking cock. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, sit down. Everybody, sit down for a minute. Beetlejuice, drink your coffee. Drink your coffee. There are a lot of kids listening to the show this morning because I'm coming on. So we don't want to do that, Beetlejuice. Motherfucker. We don't want to do that. Everybody out there, I apologize for all that bad language. I didn't bring it. You know what I mean? You know what I. I come, I try to Mr. stay Tate, straight forward, Tate, but Tate. that's the stuff I, you got to deal with when it come to Howard's show. Hey, if, if listen. You, yes, sir. Listen, these yes, two sir. guys have their thing. They go ahead all the time. I know. I know. I know. my friend. I, I know. Listen. I know. Well, we ain't going to worry about you. I was shocked juice. because that's the first time they've almost like, taken it out of the state. Yeah. Right. But, 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 but people out there, you never know what's going on in the Howard show. Be, you don't know if it's an act, this was crazy, be, what, whatever. Did, did Mr. T just ease the uh, tension in here? Well, he took it a little easy, yeah. Yeah, he did. Yeah, right. he all did. Right. All right. He's yeah. lucky. You're, Artie's lucky that Mr. T was here, right? Oh, uh, yeah? Am I lucky? Well, I'm glad I'm here, people, you know. But see, that's the stuff like that I don't deal with on my show. I pity the fool. I don't deal with that. And on my show, on TV land, I told me 11, 10 o'clock, you know, I deal with warm stuff. You know, I, we don't go that crazy. I don't show. Team. I don't call nobody a fool. I'm not hollering at nobody. It's a different I, I deal kind with, of show. Yes, yes, yes. It's not like this here. The phone is Blue Irish. Go ahead, Blue Irish. Blue Irish. Hi. Hi. I'd like to blow Mr. T. Oh. Oh. Well, He's sexy. He is sexy, but I don't know that that's his thing. <laughs> What do you say, Mr. T? Mr. She's T, making you a, she's an offer. She thinks you're sexy and but obviously attractive. You, you know what I said earlier, Robin and Howard, you know, <laughs> I don't go there. I come here. See, you know. Kids are listening, Iris. Right, right, right. You know, I, you know my, my, my rap haven't changed no matter how many times I come on, Howard. All the stuff you throw at me, I'm still stay straight and narrow. Uh, that's why I keep my eyes on the prize, you know. You. No, you know, I don't. Upset. You know, I expect that's from you. You know, it's all in love and all that. You know, as oh, long as I, I don't. As long as I don't, <laughs> as long as I don't go that way, you know what I mean? It Get into that, you uh, know. Mr. T, but it's I all in fun and good. I love that you're going to uh, have your TV show, I Pity the Full Yeah, can't wait to watch. October 11th at 10 p.m. on TV Land. We will all look for it. We wish you much success. Thank you, Howard. Thank uh, you so much for always inviting me. We always. have fun. We, we get the message out. You know, I thank you for inviting me all these years. Beetlejuice, uh, you are the man. Uh, I should talk about what Beat is up to so he can get his plug in. You know in. what? He has been smiling. And Mr. T did lift his spirit. Mr. T, you did lift his spirit. Well, he I did. hope so. I hope so. If I, you know, if I can touch someone, you know, that's what it's all about. Well, Mr. T, you can see Beat getting a tattoo from Corey Cudney at Divine Machine Studios tomorrow and Thursday at Club oh, yeah. Diablo in Buffalo. What kind of tattoo are you getting? Well, I'm getting a tattoo on my wife. Your and wife. where are you putting it? On my back. <laughs> on your back. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, how You know you know who show I'm going to be on tomorrow? Who? Martha Stewart. Oh, that'll be I'm fun. gonna be cooking with Martha Stewart, yeah. Mr. T oh, oh, oh. from the Domestic Diva. Me You're and Mr. Lucky T. Man. Yes, I am. Definitely, definitely. If I'll be with a chick, it'll be a rich chick, you know. <laughs> I hope you I hope you tap that if you no, know what I mean. No, no. <laughs> Can tap that. Anyone can. Oh, you've had Martha Stewart? <laughs> oh, I can tap that too. Oh, oh my God. Hey, B, why are you getting a tattoo at a club? I don't understand. What is the drama in that? Well, what like that? Because that's the way it is, bro. Yeah. It's going to take two days to put this tattoo on? Oh, yeah. Where are you putting it? It was. Well, it don't bother me on my back. Oh, I'm it's on your back? I'm used to it. All yeah. right. He has many tattoos. Yes, I yes. Know okay. Know. Yeah, no. No, I got a little tattoo on my arm. I got it about 20, 30 years ago. It say TCB, Mr. T, take care of the business, you know what I mean? Well, okay, so then, then you're well, not yeah. against that. Yeah, no, I'm not against that, too. To each his own, is they body. Why didn't you get TCB on there, taking care of business? What does that mean? Taking care of business. 
Oh, I take my care of my business That's all right. by myself. And, and, you and, don't need to tattoo to remind you. And to no, download, I can and, tattoo all day long if and, I want to. And to download Beat's new ringtones or to yes. book Beetlejuice with his new dwarf stripper. Oh, oh booty dwarf juice. stripper? Booty, booty juice. juice. Who is Booty Juice? Quickly, tell us I about her. I don't know. She does the fray. Yeah. <laughs> and she's a dwarf who strips. She gets nude. Oh, at these oh yeah. Yeah, oh, okay. Ma, ma, ma. Go to jollydwarf.com. Yes, That's what is it? If you go to the Gary preview page on the right in orange, you can hear Beat's uh, new ringtone. Oh. Oh, let me wow. hear that. All right, let's listen to that because, you know, Beat has a business as well. Mr. That's right, that's yeah. right. It's only right. It's only Gary right. Equal page. time. Gary, preview page one or two, Gary? One. One, and let's hear Beetlejuice's new ringtone. Uh, let's see. Where is it? For, uh, give me a hint. Far right and orange. All right. All right, let's take a listen to this and see what Beetlejuice is up to. <laughs> That. Definitely, that's heavy Beetle stuff, that. Robin. Yeah. That's, that's all hip hop, honey. Hip hop, right? Yeah, that's, right. what they call that's, the real, that's the real stuff I'm doing. Wow. Right. Did you yeah. write that yourself? Yeah, I wrote that in the studio. Yeah. Wow. Well, well, good for you. Yes, yes. Congratulations, Beetle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's great. I tell you. Yeah, it's that's not good. Not as good as Mr. T in the pocket, but it's pretty yeah. good. Well, yeah. Mr. T, if he's going to take your Mr. T in the pocket, you should get that put on your phone, don't you? Think? Yeah, but you know, I I want to I didn't want to put it on. You know, uh, you you know, God has been blessing me. I do have some ringtones out there myself. <laughs> right. You know, so I didn't want to oh, step I on the toes. I, 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 I took the humility step. You know, <laughs> nice. you know. So yeah, Mr. T, I pity the full premiere is October 11th at 10 p.m. on TV Land. Beetlejuice, you'll see. We'll see you at JollyDwarf.com. We're right. going to see you at uh, at uh, uh, Club Diablo in Buffalo. Right. right. And the new ringtones and everything right. else at jollydwarf.com. You got and, it. And, uh, and let me tell you, you guys are both doing very well, Mr. T. I Thank think you, Howard. will be a big You're hit welcome. for you. We're going to take a break. We'll be back right after these you words. Got it. All right, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. And now, here's Gary Garber with Brittany Murphy. How you doing? Thank you. How are you? Good, how are you? Good, thank you. Uh, how has Liza inspired you? Uh, she's inspired me in, in so many different ways, but um, a few of which very particularly. She's shown how to keep her strength and vulnerability throughout the years. She owns a stage like no one's business and is genuinely kind. Um, the way she captures an audience, she's just as kind of capturing human beings in person. And it doesn't mean because you can own a stage, you, you, you can't be an extraordinarily wonderful person. It's frightening to meet one's own idols and when I met her I was so over just just it more than pleased by the human being that she is hey, why do people think you're crazy I'm sorry why do people think you're crazy I didn't know that people did <laughs> thanks so much did you have sex with Howard Stern <laughs> have a wonderful wonderful night thanks thank you you're listening to the Howard Stern show Who's Beetle yelling at? Was he yelling at Artie? Yeah, he's Him and Mr. He's what? T are talking to each other. What? He's really angry at Artie. He is? Yeah, he, well, he's, he's telling Artie to step outside if he wants right now. Well, yeah, no, don't, don't, don't go inside. Let's bring him in. Let me just find out what it is here. Uh, Beat. Beat. Hey, Beat. <laughs> I just got to hear him. Uh, when you egg him on, he get, he's, wow. someone wound him up. He got very confrontational today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, B, what's going on? I thought everything was all right. Hey, B, what's going on? I thought everything's okay. Yo. I hey, thought I... hey, yeah, hey, it doesn't matter how to solve it. The problem, problem faggot? Hey, you got a problem. Well, problem. what's my problem? You got a problem. Well, you the one got a problem. No, I know. You got you a problem. No, you the one got a problem. You, well, why you, you the one got a fucking problem. Why are you trying to solve it? Yeah, because I'm going to solve you. Why do you fucking come over yeah, here and solve it, motherfucker? You come over here. Why come over there and kick your ass? Wait a second. Should I come over there and kick your ass? You're my friend. And Artie, you're my friend. Yeah. Can't yeah, we well. just forget this? Mm. What happened? I don't know, man. He's starting to throw around yeah, fucking words. Yeah, no, yeah, he's starting you, to... you, you were on the start of fucking words. What? You heard. You heard what I said. Yeah, look, dude. You I'm just pointing out the fact that you're gay. You're a motherfucker, yo. 
You don't know about the fat piece of shit. Don't you want me to come over there and beat the shit? You don't know about the fat piece of shit. You don't know about the fat piece of shit. Come over there and beat the shit out of you. Come over here and don't look, piece of shit. What's gonna happen when I come over there? You ain't gonna do shit. And then when I knock you out, what's gonna happen? When I knock you out, what's gonna happen? Come to the door, bitch. Come to the door, bitch. Beat, you don't beat. You, you are a motherfucker. Beat, you called him the N word. You are a beat. motherfucking N word, motherfucker. But beat, you called him you the N word. You ain't shit. Beat, beat, beat. I Nobody understand. Nobody ain't gonna do shit to me. Beat, you're right. But you called him the N word. That, well, he is one. That's a terrible word. Yeah, that's bullshit. Uh, no, hey, don't don't move. Don't leave like a pussy. Where no you going, like pussy? Where no, you going? No, 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 no. I'm waiting for you outside, bitch. <laughs> I'm waiting for you outside, motherfucker. <laughs> I ain't no fucking pussy. All right, pussy. I ain't no fucking pussy. Fuck you, homo. Oh. Fuck you, homo. Wow. Oh, that was... <laughs> <laughs> What's with you guys? Come on, what happened? We used to be friends. I don't, I don't know. Make up with him. Tell him. To go, I want. Let's Should bring I him back in, and you should apologize. All right. Yeah. All right. Right. All right. Bring Beetle back in. He already wants to apologize. Tell him you're sorry. I pity the fool. <laughs> I was afraid to come in. What just happened? He's got that Mr. Good thing for you. In three minutes from now, he'll never he's recognize you. He didn't even Thank know. goodness. Yeah. He'll be yelling at a fire hydrant. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, he's got that Mr. Wait, D wait, thing wait. stuffed in his breast. I know, he loves it. <laughs> wait, beat. Oh, no, he's taking shit. off his shirt. No, 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 no. Artie oh, wants serious. to apologize. Oh, he's serious. Right? You know, oh, man? Oh, hey, oh, beat, hey, man. Hey, beat, beat, beat. Artie wants to apologize. Beat, beat. Listen look, to him. You got me scared now. I'm sorry. You want to fight? I'm sorry. I ain't no punk motherfucker like you. I know. I'm sorry. I'm apologizing. I ain't I'm no sorry. I'm 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 sorry. Right. No, I agree. I'm sorry. I'm I ain't no motherfucking pussy. I ain't no pussy, nigga. I'm sorry. Wait, there, there's an apology going Just on. Just listen to this. Just listen to this. He's apologizing, Mr. T. Just listen. Don't make me mad. They ain't got shit to do with that. <laughs> All right? All right. Say, say, tell you Pete, listen. I'm sorry. Do you accept my apology? I don't think he heard your apology. Beetle, I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, it didn't work. I know. I he came think... in here. He took his shirt off. Yeah, he's he's, he's ready, ready to, to go. Tell him if he takes Mr. his off. Mr. T, hey, Mr. T, <laughs> Mr. T, he's trying to apologize. Huh? He's trying to apologize. <laughs> yeah, but 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 they ain't gonna get in the world all the cursing and whatnot, you know. Uh, so we, somebody gotta take the higher road. He's trying to. He's trying. All right, so I'm gonna try to. I'm so I'm gonna to, I'm, I'm talk to Beetlejuice, you know. So if you if he you be tell him he wants to apologize, huh? He wants to apologize. Right, Beetle, he wants. Don't apologize. Come on back in. Don't be shit to me right now. You don't want to apologize? Beetle, Beetle, we, Beetle, there's ladies around. Beetle, we, I don't give a fuck. Beetle, Beetle. I don't give a fuck. Beetle, Beetle, Beetle. All right. That's not good. They'll beat up. Right, right. That's not good, Beetle. Beetle, that's not good. 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 You you prove your point. You showed him. He's sorry. He said he's sorry. He said he's sorry. Artie said he's sorry. Artie said he's sorry, Beetle. Beetle, Artie said he's sorry. Beetle, Artie said he's sorry. Artie said he's sorry. Beetle, Artie said he's sorry. What is it? Beetle, Artie said he's sorry. I don't give a fuck what he said. He said he said he said he want to make up if you if you want to make up. Do you want to make up? Do you want to make up, Beetle? Beetle, do you want to make up? I don't give a fuck what Beetle, do you want to make up with him? I don't got to make shit up for nobody. So you, so you want to keep it on? You want to keep you know it going what? on, I right? I don't give a fuck what he says. Oh. I don't give a fuck. So you, I don't. I mean, he want to finish it. He, he said, he said he don't, don't want to fight. A, he don't want to fight. Don't give a fuck. He don't want to fight, Beetle. He's calm down, motherfucker. He's calm down. He don't want to fight. I don't give a fuck. He's calm down. Why? 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 Why is he going down, Beetle? What if I, I thought we was cool, what Beetle. Let him just he's beat me up. He said he was sorry. Want to go out there and let him beat you up? What if I just said he was sorry? <laughs> Beetle, he said he was sorry. <laughs> Should I do that? Beetle, he said he was sorry. Isn't that a big closure? Don't do me shit. Beetle, Beetle. Let him beat you up. Beetle, he's, he's not talking. Beetle, he said he was sorry. You're going to let him beat you up? Somebody said he was sorry. That means that means they apologize. Wait, wait, wait. What? What? Let's discuss this. Can I he mean, actually hurt you, maybe? No. Well, no. I've seen, I'll tell you what, on that one DVD, I've seen him throw punches, man. If he connects, it might be bad, but I'll just try you to, like... You think you can dodge it? I'll just try to, no, I'll just try to come Go around. out and tell him cover. he can beat you up. People call me names. I let it pass. He's going to go crazy if he sees Yeah, maybe you better not. Yeah, he, could, he could kick you in the balls or something. See, that's what I'm afraid of. I don't want to get kicked in the nuts. No, no, don't mean nothing. 
Yeah. All right, Vito, you see, you know, well, see what you're doing now is it's a, it's a little unnecessary, you know, because he quit. He said he quit. He apologized. Fuck y'all don't mean nothing. So you just want to keep on going on, right? Let me just. Nothing. You want to keep on doing it, right? Fuck y'all don't mean nothing. You want to keep on going? That's what you want to hey, do? Hey, I'm going to get mine. Hey. He's hey, like Palestine and Israel. I'm going to get mine. Vito, you have nothing to prove. You have nothing to prove. I'm going to get mine. You have nothing to prove. I got something to prove. You know, he said he's sorry. I got something to prove. I got something to prove. I'm sorry, man. I got something to prove. I'm apologizing. I got something to prove. Vito, I'm sorry. Child don't mean nothing to me, man. Child don't mean nothing. What have I said? I'm sorry. He said he's sorry. I don't care what he said. I don't care. So you don't want to accept his apology? I ain't say nobody's apology. You don't want to. So you don't... I ain't say no nobody's apology. How can we make this better, man? How can we make this better? Nobody. Make nobody. What if I gave you twenty dollars? I don't apologize to nobody. I don't apologize to nobody. So you don't care. Listen. I don't care. I don't. I don't apologize to nobody. That's all right. Some people, you know, you you you. You, you can't, so you, can, yeah, you just get to how you roll. Right. Yeah, so you just go do your job and don't even say that. So when you get the curse and whatnot, just don't respond to it. Just don't respond to it. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm just gonna go now, kid. I'm sorry, buddy. I'm not I know you're sorry. Just take the higher roll. Don't right. even, don't even respond to it. Right. Don't even, don't even respond to it, Artie. No, no, I ain't saying nobody. All right. I ain't saying nobody. I'm not saying nobody. Fuck you, faggot. Artie, Artie. Well, well. Well, you know, this, this is this 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 show right here. It takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of work. I see right here running in here. It's never going to get straightened out between you two. All right, all right. It didn't work. What out. happened? You two used to be friends. Mr. Yeah. T tried to get me to take the high road, and I didn't. Yeah. Fuck <laughs> you. Well, I'm sorry you guys aren't friends anymore. Well, I'm going to make it up to him. I'm I don't gonna... believe Beetle really wanted to fight. Once you were out there, he no, he I don't think he... on his shirt. If he I was... well, I went out there, and I don't think he knew who I was again. <laughs> <laughs> he just knows he's angry. He doesn't he's know mad. who I am. Well, Artie, uh, listen, I hope you work out your differences with Beat, and Beat will be getting a tattoo from Corey Cudney at Divine Machine Studios tomorrow. Go say hi to Beat Thursday at Club Diablo in Buffalo. And you gotta download Beat's new ringtones or, or the book Beat. You can go to the uh, jollydwarf.com and he's got a new dwarf stripper booty juice. All right, they're out there working. You know what? I gotta give him some of the cocaine soft drink. Maybe that'll help. Uh, is he all right out there? All right. He's angry. He's angry. Okay. Well, yeah. rightly so. Tom, I'm gonna take him a lunch at Del Frisco's. Ask him if he wants to go to lunch with Artie. <laughs> <laughs> He's still angry. Oh boy, I, you know I think he could kick your ass. I bet he boy, could. He does get angry. Yeah, he does. Well, did you ever see that? They have a, that great DVD out of like Beetlejuice Uncensored, where he's in the Superman outfit in the back of the limo and he's punching drunken Jamie in the face. Yeah, and he uh, he can fight. Oh, he's he throws a, a got a nice uh, nice uh, a right hook. cross and a left hook. Yeah, he's like <laughs> he's like a, a little smoking Joe Frazier. I love beat. But he does get pissed off at you, yeah. and he's got a, he's got the and then he going. can't calm down. Yeah, he's got he's got to calm down. Huh? Yeah. Well, listen. He's talking to you. You're not even there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Somebody get him laid. That's what he needs. That's what we both need. <laughs> he certainly knows all the talk, though. I mean, I love the boastfulness. Yeah. Come I'll over here. You, I've seen him fight. He's <laughs> he's a tough guy. He does not back down. Amazing. Yeah. Well, Mr. T's working with him out there. Actually, Mr. T's doing a lot of good right now. Yeah. He's out there really doing his thing. You yeah. Know, I can see why his show's going to be successful. But I'm worried. Beetle's lost like half his teeth. Uh, there's no teeth left in Beetle's head. Yeah. You know. <sighs> What's going on out there? What is that? I mean, he's still yelling and screaming. You want us to get a mic on him again or... I, I, what is he screaming about now? Tell Artie? him Artie wants to take him to lunch. Yeah, tell him. All right, hold on. You can tell him. Tell him if, uh, <laughs> if he thinks he can chew on a steak at this point. I'd love to yeah, buy ask, him one. Ask uh, B if he remembers who he, We should line up a bunch of people and ask if he can find which one he's mad at. Angry with. Say Artie wants to take him to lunch. Fuck you. He's on the Somebody's phone. on the phone? Probably Sean. Sean calms him down. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Something's going on out there. Listen to I don't know fuck about Listen to Howard. Hey, B. Artie wants to take you to lunch. Yeah, B. fuck Artie. Fuck you too. All right. Hey, wow. B. B. Wow. Hey, B. I love you. I love you, man. Don't I'll buy. I'll food. buy you whatever whatever food fuck you're able to chew on. Fuck out of my face, man. How about some applesauce? No lunch? All right. Leave B alone. He's, He's really. Enough. Let him calm down. Give him a chance to breathe there. Artie, Get I have out of to... his face. <laughs> well, this got worse than it's ever been. I yeah, yeah, I bet. You better not go out there now, Artie. I know. 
I'm sorry you guys haven't worked things out. Me too, because it started out as a playful little thing, and then, you know, now we're really enemies, unfortunately. I wonder if you sent Jason out there as Artie, if you would think it was Artie. <laughs> Let's see. Get I Jason out there. Leave Beetle alone. It would be funny to watch Beetle beat up Jason. <laughs> Ow, that hurt. Hey, there's other news. All right, leave Beetle. Robin's all over your Gail King story. Yeah, she likes that. Oh, I can't wait. Because Robin wants happen. to be friends with Gail King. Hell no, I don't want to be friends with Gail King. <laughs> Actually, do we all do? No, 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 not you me. Realize... I do not want to be in that stream. Didn't you always think Gail King lived like right next to Oprah, like in Chicago or something? No. Gail King lives here. I didn't know she lived in New York. I knew she lived no. in Philly for a while. I know that they have never lived together. They're on the phone all the time. And Gail King, I didn't know this either, was in television for a really long time as like a newscaster. Right, in Philly. See, I didn't know that. Yeah, she was in Baltimore when she first met Oprah. How can you avoid this if you watch Oprah? She was in Baltimore. I don't with really Oprah, watch it. And that's how they met. And they used to have these, like, pajama parties and stay up talking all night. And after Oprah went to Chicago, the friendship continued. Gail went to Philly, Oprah went to Chicago, and it continued this phone conversation. Um. In fact, Gail King's husband said he had to go because Oprah was calling at 2 o'clock. I could see why, though. I mean, she is kind of really interesting. Like, I don't know, I found myself caught up in a whole big conversation with her, and I go, wow, maybe, Oprah, maybe Oprah's gone to something here with Gail King. But I, um, I walk in, and uh, who do I see right away? Gail King talking to someone. Yes. So I went, oh, shit, I'm probably not welcome here. I should probably turn around and get the hell out, you know, because I, I, I don't know what I say about Gail King or Oprah, but I don't, you know. Well, you had just recently been screaming, why is she in my, your life? I, I, or... No, I was upset that Gail King at the Ed Bradley funeral just walked in and walked right up to the front with three in her entourage, and she walked right in, and I was sitting in the back. But that's not all you said. You and called I'm... her something. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that No, was it. I didn't. Yes. Oh, yeah, you did. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> You're wrong. I would never do and that. And you were screaming it. <laughs> wow, okay. You know, and, and so I, I see Gail King and I went, oh, I just better, like, watch my step here than... than Beth whispers to me over, there's Spike Lee. And I go, oh, no, it's a landmine. Oh, my God, where do you go in this room? Yeah, you remember like, what you said about him, right? There's landmines all over. I never said, I said I don't like his movies. I said I love Malcolm X and everything else I don't like. And it's a bunch well, of bullshit. said a lot of other things. Too. No, who remembers? <laughs> anyway. I don't see why who a guy would take. Who remembers? I do. I don't. A guy wouldn't take that personal, the fact that you've liked one of his 40 movies. Well, hey, you know, what am I supposed to do? I don't lie. I, I liked Malcolm X. It's more X. about his politics. You're really taking right. him to test. And I'm not even sure what his politics are. And it depends on what film it is. You've right. always talked about the white people going to see Do the Right Thing and then him screaming about the white people. Yeah. I if like he that. ran, he'd be on the douchebag ticket. Uh, <laughs> the things that go on at a funeral. <laughs> <laughs> this wasn't even a funeral. This was a party. This it was a party. Like it was a party. Funeral. <laughs> funeral. I thought this it was sounded like a funeral. It sounds like a funeral. funeral. It sounds like uh, Howard's funeral. <laughs> well, I... I uh, it was weird. So I go to Bryant uh, Gumbel's house. Uh, I've met him and his wife a lot of times in, uh, around town. And they were nice enough to invite us. And, you know, right away I'm like, oh, shit, I'm Howard Stern. People have weird reactions to me, you know what I mean? It's like... It sounds like Bryant uh, was the whitest guy there, too. Uh, <laughs> no. It was, it, it, was, it was really nice, actually. It was yeah. nice to be invited somewhere and feel like you're part of a, like a showbiz community, uh. you know, because I never feel like I'm connected to any of that, you know, because nobody invites me, and if they do, it's a disaster. So I was really quite, you know, taken with the mm. fact that I'd be invited to a nice Christmas party at someone's home. Like, they would actually right. give me their address and <laughs> let you come in. And let me and come in. And, and I'm well behaved on a lot of fun at parties. Are you? I mean, no. But <laughs> I'm well behaved. You're Robin, well behaved. you would know. I would say he's like saying he's fun. <laughs> but you know me. I know how to behave. I, 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 he always behaves. Yeah, I'm not a total asshole. <laughs> so, I walk in and like, right away, I mean, the first person I see through the door is Gail King and I went, oh shit, she probably hates my guts. Wants to fucking kill me. What does she because, look like? Uh, I wouldn't even know what Attractive the hell she woman, looks. black woman. She's, uh, I'd say, you know, late 30s, early 40s. Would you say hot? Oh, listen to you being uh, generous, oh, late geez. 30s. Oh, is she? What? I don't know. I'm, well, she's I'm, I don't even friend. know. Oprah's How old like, do you say she's she is? She's as old as Oprah. She's in her 50s. No. Yes. No way. Yes. Yeah? Yeah. All right. Okay, I didn't know that. Uh, so, 
So she looks. She must be good looking, man. She she's an attractive like, woman. Yeah. She's not like you know. She's not like Pam Anderson. But she's like attractive, right? Wouldn't you say, Robin? Yeah, yeah, she's a cute girl. I yeah. saw an old episode of Soul Train. Lola Falana. That was a hot broad. <laughs> that was a broad. Ooh, she hot. She oh, was she... on Soul Train. I jerked off the Soul Train. <laughs> I don't so, remember Lola being on. Soul she was Train. a guest. I see. So I. You know, I walk in and see her, and I'm just like, oh, I'll just keep walking and shit, and walk through. And <laughs> you try that. Until I, yeah, yeah, so I walk. Try to be uh, inconspicuous. Yeah. And what was really kind of <laughs> nice, work. what was kind of nice, I'm in the room, and all of a sudden I hear, Howard Stern. And I turn around, and it's Gail King. She came over to me, she says, I have to come up to you and say hi. And uh, we had this really, like, nice conversation for about uh, five minutes, you uh -huh. know, to get to know one another. And I was asking her how she liked radio, and she loves TV. She liked to be back on TV. You know, she was giving me the whole thing. And, and then all of a sudden, she says, you know, the shit you put out there, and that's shit. I don't know if she said shit, but the stuff you put out there. You know, about Oprah. What? I said, what did I say about Oprah? I said, look, I, I don't know what I'm talking about here. <laughs> oh, and she said, and she goes, uh, you said, Oprah and I heard that you said that Oprah should eat a ham sandwich and choke on it and die. What? Yeah. When did said, you say that? I, I probably did. That. Probably around the time Mama Kaz died, which is oh, 100 years ago. stop it. She couldn't be back then. <laughs> yeah, so I said, well, I said, look, I probably said it. I'm not going to tell you I didn't because I don't know. I mean, I don't well, remember. Well, I know you jumped all over Oprah for the Hermes thing. Right. I don't remember exactly how you uh I said, look, Gail, said. I said, I do radio. I do five and a half hours a day, and I say whatever comes into my mind. And, uh, you know, there are victims. There are people who get blown up in the air. Uh, I don't recall you re re wanting Oprah to die. No, I don't know. You know what I mean? You're trying to be funny on here, and you're trying to do, you know, your thing. But, you know, I, I say but, whatever's you know, on my mind. But, again, sounding like somebody who... Said something to that, someone. Yeah, they interpreted you for them. Yeah, maybe you're right. I wish you had been there, because I would have said... I never said that. That's what I should have said. But right. no, I just I, figured. I, I, mean, I don't recall. We love Oprah. What are you talking about? We speak her name. Man, we speak <laughs> your name. I think your, be your best defense in a situation like this is to tell somebody. Imagine having an honest five-hour conversation every day for the last 20 years about your life. Like right. Sometimes people get get caught in the run and sometimes they're your friends even you know yeah so we were we were really i would backpedal up. <laughs> i don't know it that's was, what he's trying to do here you know what i, I don't, do five hours <laughs> yeah I, I didn't really backpedal i just didn't have a defense i go look i say what i say i've got an audience that's loyal to me and i do my thing and that's it you know i say lots of shit i don't know and uh but it wasn't like an argument or anything she was just saying well you know i said and she doesn't even care what you said about her as Oprah. No, no, no. She said to me, and, I, and by the way, at the funeral, <laughs> I walked in, and I just walked right to the front. She yeah, goes, but the guy didn't block her. No. And, and she said, I didn't have any plan, or I, wherever I would have sat. I said, she goes, I just kept moving forward, and I, and I sat down. I said, yeah, well, all right. I said, whatever. It wasn't her fault that right. the guy let her go. Yeah. <laughs> and then, but you um, still resented it. But it was nice, and then... Uh, I got to walk around uh, Brian's. And, and I walked around Brian's apartment. Uh huh. Very crowded with a lot of people. He had a big turnout, not and like Lisa G. He's huh? got a real. No yeah, I don't know what happened to Lisa G's party. <laughs> Were there cookies night. at Brian's? Thing? <laughs> nice food. People walking around with trays and stuff. He must have a big spread, then, huh? A big spread. He had a real nice spread, and now he's got a private screening room and uh, wow. he gave oh, me a tour. you're talking huge. Yeah, in, in the Manhattan. I yeah, mean, it was very, very nice. And he goes, "This is where I." He made a lot of money. The Today he, he show. did. He, this is where he watches his football games. You know, he does. He's really into sports. Well, that's right. how he, he started. That real yeah. sports yeah, he thing. A, yeah. Just someone walked in and said, "Brian, is this where you watch? You know, your games?" And he goes, "Yeah." You know, and he was like real kind of proud of the place and showing it off. And, he was the host of the NFL yeah, Today yeah. Well, when well, I was a teenager. He was a sportscaster yeah. when he started out. And yeah. he's got a great lifestyle. Like he, as soon as it gets cold, boom, him and his wife right down to Florida. They got a well, place. He gave up working, which is a smart thing. Yeah, but you got to have money to do that. I mean, but he is, did. He was making. Well, he was. Katie Couric before Katie Couric, wow. so he was making seven, eight million dollars a year. Yeah, he he saved it too because he's living a nice life and his wife's nice and and then I'm sitting there and uh, you know who walked in the screening room? Oh, uh -oh. another guy who's got a problem. This yeah. is the greatest. Yeah, I'm like everywhere you go, you got to watch yourself. Bob, Al Roker comes in, <laughs> <laughs> and he it's dark in the screening room because we're watching Austin Powers, you uh -huh. know. 
And uh, I'm just I go, this is a good party. I don't have to be with him. I can sit and watch a movie. Yeah, I'll just watch uh, Brian yeah. Screen. And Beth's uh, go, well, maybe we should walk around. I go, what for? We got TV, a big it's screen. It's safe in here. This is life, this is life coming full circle because you've done all you've done in life. And once again, you're amongst a lot of black people who are hostile towards you. Right. <laughs> well, what don't you the... like about Al Roker? <laughs> oh, where do I start? No, I don't, really? have a, I don't have a problem with Al Roker. Sometimes I goof on him because he's so goofy and milk toast. Yeah. And like, he's you know, charming. Just like, well, whatever. Ever, but I evidently you call I call it charm. Howard yeah. calls it milk. I call it like you know what? Who wants a career like that? But uh, meanwhile, you know, so I go over. I wasn't gonna be a pussy about it. I just say, "Hey, Al, how you doing?" He goes, "Oh, hello," and he like shook my hand oh. and then left the room immediately. Really? Yeah, it wasn't oh. that comfortable. Oh, that's oh, yeah, Al's not yeah. uh, that's being not big nice. about this. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, hey, you know, whatever. He was, he was like. <laughs> Yeah. About goofing on Letterman used to goof on him right to his face. Oh, yeah, like, what I do? No, I'm so, well, I'm saying when you the stuff you say about him is sort of out there and honest. And Letterman would just be put him in bits that clearly were making fun of him. And right. I thought he'd be yeah. nice to Letterman. Well, what and, have you said about El Roker? You know what? I'm going to be honest with you, George. I have no idea what I've said about. All right, Roker. you want me to remind Robin you? Of, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly it's the fact that because, thing because, thing because I know. By the way, before right. you say this, I know that he's angry with me because he is like an interview said that I'm a horrible person, mm. and I don't remember... He, he turned on us. He used to be Robin friendly says, to the did, show. Did he re I mean, he, he used to do our show. Still, he was actually still friendly, I think, up until that stomach thing. Right, that's exactly right? what I was going to say, yeah. The then fucker's hungry is his problem. You, he used to come on the show all the time. You first oh, you all, commented on his stomach. Yeah, I don't know. He wasn't revealing how he was losing weight or something for <laughs> right. a while, and you were like, you know, again, with the come clean thing, and then you said, I don't think that's really losing weight. Don't give yourself a lot of credit. And be fat you again look again miserable. No time. You're getting fat again. And yeah, he hosted so. the show on the Food Network. That yeah. was the main thing you were goofing on. Like, hey, surrounded by food, he's going right. to be fat again. Right, he can't again. stay away from food. I'll right. tell you the truth. That doesn't sound so bad to me. It well, probably it hurt Al. Al was uh, hurt by him. I thought when I blamed 9-11 on him, he was pissed. Well, that too. In the realm of our world, it's not so bad. But uh, to a lot of people, that could sound, you know, mean. mean. Al's never been attacked <laughs> by anyone. So any yeah. attack, probably. He's Mr. Nice. It's is, true. Is devastating. What kind of that? asshole would attack Al Roker? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Artie just, Artie just hit it on the head. In our world, it's not much. But for many people, Howard... You're the only person who fucks with them. You right, know what I mean? Right. Like, Al Roker's got a perfect life, except for you. Yeah. I, I don't, <laughs> but everything Robin's saying, while I seem to remember it, you know, I don't remember the specifics. We also do. I don't think it's so bad. Yeah, we, we also goofed a, a lot about um, how he met his wife, and Robin used to make fun of the fact about how um, he was a big fatso, and he got the hot wife, and he used to go put uh, food in her refrigerator because he was such a loser. Um, you know, oh, you, you called him the loser. I just told you oh, the story. Please. I think Robin is the one who should be mad. No, no, but anybody, no, we, we live in a world. Talk to me anymore either. Right. We live in a world where we call our colleagues and friends monkeys, and and uh, we make fun of people being fat and sick. And that's true. <laughs> anybody like, in I public mean, life has to we have. We don't a... make fun of the sick, do we? Oh yes, we do. <laughs> By the way, well, we're oh, horrible. They... Oh. Put us right in the mood, right in the holiday spirit. So then I, uh, hey now. so I figured I better leave the screening room, and I left the screening room. Oh, because Al stayed in the screening room. Yeah, but th no, no, no. He left too. We all walked out single file, oh. and uh, he, you know, he he didn't talk to me. He, like we got away from each other as quickly as possible. It was a pretty crowded party. He used so. to love. You know, here's a funny thing. He I used to love. Us. I would have said. He sure loved that show when we weren't talking about him. Right. He right. loved the show. Right. right. Everybody was like, talking about him. He didn't love it anymore. Was right. his wife there? Did you get to meet the wife? I did not. I believe me, it was. He was not socialized. He was like, oh, <laughs> like, like I, I put my hand out and shook his hand, but it was very, very minimal kind. How of awkward. I saw her. On, um, it was awkward. You've got to have a time. thick skin to be in public <laughs> life. You know, I mean, yeah. think of all the abuse that all of us here take. Right. Well, in and this room, yeah. Everyone yeah. else knows what doesn't yeah, happen. Yeah, but we 
sort of field ourselves. Yeah, I used to be, you know, we beat up each other and then we go out and beat up the rest. Howard, there was, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a scumbag. Let's face it, George. <laughs> but there was like a half of the show. Of... They know, you know, that this is part of what it is. But and... George, you have a great sense of humor. And look you how really... long it waited. Well, a you gotta have. You really look do. Look at how long it took George to actually feel comfortable about right. coming. We were after you for how many years? <laughs> yes, yes, you yeah. have. <laughs> so don't well, say it's so easy. Uh, when George came out of the closet and liberated him. It really did. You know, it, I think it really he, has. I think he spent a lot of years trying to avoid uh, being gay in the public. And I think it, it actually liberated you in ways that you never even would imagine. It really has. You're totally free. Oh, it's got to be amazing to get yeah. that off your back. Oh, I, I mean, you know, people know me for who I really am. And right. they know, you know, they know Brad. And, uh, you know, Brad, you, in fact, you've made Brad a celebrity now. <laughs> you know, Brad people go up it. to him, and, you know, because they see him with me. And they say, you know, are you Brad? And then all, the whole crowd gravitates toward him. And they're talking to him. And here I am left out in the cold. <laughs> <laughs> right, Brad is more interesting out of the two of you. Did you I wonder, yeah. George, did you ever have to deal with stuff when you would like go for a part or something where people just had no clue that you were gay and would ask you to do like weird shit, like you know, make out with chicks or you know, that's what, not weird. What's I've been doing that all the time. <laughs> Gary has weird questions. I know um, Gary is the weird one. Yeah, yeah no, weird. you're weird. <laughs> He's an actor. Yeah, yeah I'm an actor. Just see those chompers moving like a Were fat couch who went on for ass. He's Howard Stern, producer, that big fat loser jackass. He's got a big fat belly and breath that smelly and funky. Right, cold like a freaking dummy. He's a horse tooth funny monkey. Did you ever make fun of gay people to seem straight, like some gay guys? Do oh no, that. no, I never, never did that. that. No. But did you? Uh, did you have to endure that kind of humor from some people? You know, right. yeah, because you know what, you have to. <laughs> like us, have, <laughs> and that's what gave me a thick well, no, skin. He wouldn't come around us. You know, because I, I've had to, you know, kind of bear, bear with it. Yeah. And now, you know. Artie's my cuddly muffin. <laughs> Gary just left all upset, I could I tell. No. Because we goofed on his question. <laughs> but I was. Yeah, you, you left but upset. The problem is, I didn't even get my question out correctly, but that's fine. What was your question? Go ahead. Did he have it's to so be weird? Wor- it's so not worth going down that road again. <laughs> I was sort of. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Sal has a big sign called Mackine. Right oh, by. oh, where'd that, oh, where'd that oh, go from? Look at how huge that is. Wow. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Look at that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> ah, that's great. I can watch them in the hall all day. All right, turn that up. Mackine. But what I was going to say is if you had so, seen Deborah, his wife, she's more lovely than ever. I I'm saw sure. her on, like, Good Morning America. Well, whatever. So yeah, that was, like, a comfortable, but it gives you... And then I have to whisper to Beth, I go... I go, um, I didn't introduce you to Al Roker because he ran away. He didn't, he didn't like me. <laughs> and she goes, what a, what and a then, wonderful thing. And then Beth goes, well, why is that? And I go, uh, I don't know. I must have just goofed on him or something. And he can't handle it. <laughs> so uh, so where do you go now in this party? I don't know. The rooms were getting smaller and smaller. So I started walking, and then I see Gail King again, except she's in deep conversation with Spike Lee. Uh-oh. He stole her away. He's probably saying, why are you talking to that man? Let me tell you about him. <laughs> so Beth goes, why don't you go up to Spike Lee, shake his hand, and say hi? <laughs> I said, I ain't doing that. Let him do it. Yeah. I mean, why do you it. have to do it? Yeah, why do I always have to be the, the, uh, the gentleman? The peacemaker. And we were walking out, I see, I, I zeroed in, uh, Beth goes, there's Kelly Rip. I go, where? I got to go talk to her. And a friendly face. Yeah, I, I went over and her and her, her husband, um, Mark Consuelos. I know he likes you. Is his name Mark Consuelos? Yes. Yeah, Mark Consuelos. Yeah, I know he likes you. Yeah, you told he, me that before I met him. Yeah, he, uh, and, and Beth and I tower over both of them. <laughs> <laughs> and, they're like, yeah, like doll people to you. You too. <laughs> yeah, but I got, I started screaming again about how Clay Aiken was wrong to put his hand over her mouth and it wasn't homophobic for her to say something. No man should enter a woman's space and blah, 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 blah. And I'm screaming and yelling. And uh, then I could see she even got bored. And I, I said, like, Yeah, she's over it already. Yeah, and I said, I'm going on Letterman next week and I'm going to talk about it. She goes, No, no, no. Just, you know, shut Please up. Please don't bring it up anymore. Yeah, it's enough. But they're putting all the, um, you know, uh, uh, not so out people with Kelly lately. Yeah. I saw her with, you know, co-hosting with Clay Aiken, and then um, that uh, Anderson Cooper was co-hosting with her. Yeah, I saw that, too. I was like, what are they doing? He's not so out. What's his deal? 
He's he hasn't said anything about his oh, sexuality. Yeah. It's just been screamed all over the place that he's gay. Oh really? What do you know about that, George? Well, I guess as a journalist, he has to maintain that neutral position. No, he doesn't. What difference does it make who he sleeps with, whether or how he reports things? We know some journalists aren't gay, for sure. I mean, what's the big deal? Well, that's true. Isn't it silly that Clay Aiken doesn't come out of the closet? Oh, yeah, I think so. I mean, mean, he's screaming to be out of the closet. He's so, I mean, you know, neon (laughs) flashing. If he's not gay, he should be. (laughs) (laughs) You know what, George? But you know what? He claims the record company is afraid that all these middle-aged housewives who buy his music will rebel. Well, to be honest, it's Perez Hilton who claims. Yeah, but but that makes sense to me. You know, I think we ought to let everyone know that there's something gay, but well, particularly in this crowd here, because, you know, a female thing is gossiping, and right. a male thing is the strong, silent type. You know? Right, I read that I mean, article. that's what we do here. You yes. know, we go- gossip. I right, mean, so uh, you're saying everybody in this room is gay. <laughs> there's, no, there's an element. There's an element of that. <laughs> I'm then, gay. You know, they're I'm very homo, masculine like gay guys. people. Right. Like uh, in Brokeback Mountain, all they said was, Go to him. Go to him. That was about it. You know, the strong side. And then they took it right in the ass. Those guys. <laughs> That's all they say in Brokeback Mountain. I'm glad I don't want it. Um, okay, so. Yeah, so then as soon as I spoke to Kelly Ripa, even Beth said, time to go. We were tired and we just left. But uh, it was really, really a uh, nice party, actually. I mean, to be invited anywhere when you're May is very nice. Oh, you get invited places. Don't act like no, you No, I really don't, oh, though. Do I don't even... I mean, no one even invited me anywhere New Year's Eve. Really? Yeah. I don't get invited to well, a lot of stuff. Well, you'd be great at New Year's Eve. <laughs> yeah, I'm a barrel of laughs. I don't... First of all, I can't even make it to 10 o'clock on New Year's Eve. I don't even want to go anywhere. Right. New you're Eve. never up at midnight. <laughs> yeah, I know. These hours. <laughs> right. So, it's just, you know... I know 3,000 people would love to see you New Year's Eve, my audience in Philly. <laughs> Is that where you're going to be? I'm doing a gig. Every once in a while you do gigs if you're a comedian. Here's a Clay Aiken song. I'd lie on a couch and George Jones would sit on my nasty cock. Oh, Jesus. That's coming out. Nasty, long, narrow cock. I am a homo boy. The snatch doesn't interest me much. I love big, nasty, long, narrow cock. Nice. That's coming out for George Jones, too. <laughs> Snatch doesn't interest me much. Right. Now, does uh, George, do you know anything about this David Guest who was married to uh, Liza Minnelli? Yeah, what do you hear at the meetings? Uh, <laughs> Snatch doesn't interest me much. Have you ever seen him at the meetings? <laughs> yes. Oh, he's... No. he's he, oh, yeah, well, we, he, don't he's we, we don't know. We don't know. We don't know that. We don't know. Well, let me tell you something. No. He's on that uh, I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of Here in right. London. Yes. And I tell you, one of the things that most struck me about him being out there in the bush, sitting around with the guys, is he's a real guy's guy. That's right. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. I think you got that wrong, George. I would say he's a regular guy. You know, man's man type. I'm telling you, I was like, I don't... <laughs> so there you are. A Vietnam vet. ...coming off him that yeah. would say gay. I recall riding the bus and always sitting in the seat right behind the bus driver. Now I'd he be could... gay because he and hope that the kids behind me wouldn't tease me. Oh, wow. He could be a very masculine gay, but at least he's very masculine. Well, I came inside George Jones. <laughs> <her career. laughs> Poor George Jones. I know, George Jones is being maligned here. <laughs> Creator Lauren Michaels walked up and introduced himself. I started trembling. I wondered if he could smell the cum on my breath. Ugh. My mind was racing. <laughs> Cock is wow. difficult to resist. <laughs> Cock is difficult to resist. We heard yeah, that. That's why. Thank well, you. You know, speaking of that, Artie, 